Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be here with you on this Tuesday for, as I mentioned at the end of last the last episode, another author interview. Today, I am interviewing uh, author Sadie Scarlett about her debut novel, Clouds and Earth. Clouds and Earth is the first of a trilogy, the... Um, the Peace Outside trilogy. This is the first. It's another suspense thriller kind of book, but we've got, uh, as I mentioned before, we you know we've had a lot of thrillers on the podcast lately, but they've all had different elements. So they've all you know they've been thriller with a little paranormal, or a thriller with a little bit of conspiracy theory, or a thriller with. Um, you know, this or that. This is thriller with science fiction thrown in. So if you're a fan of science fiction, then this might be the thriller for you. Let me go ahead and give you the description of this book. Again, it is Clouds and Earth by Sadie Scarlett. The long war changed everything for Lieutenant First Class Sandy Attia. The piece she helped create seems to be working for everyone but her. This new world is so, well, so dull. With her commanding officer keeping her at arm's length, citing her rather unpredictable temp- temperament, Sandy is willing prey for Lyndon Hamilton, CEO of Hamilton Infosec, who needs someone to engage in a little corporate espionage. He offers p- good pay, interesting work, and excitement. Perfect. But when Sandy's face starts to show up on activists' pamphlets and rumors begin to circle regarding her alleged war crimes, any hope she had of a future in the civilian world begins to unravel. Unable to escape Hamilton's twisted ambitions, Sandy, caught between her old comrades and her new employer, must find a way to save the peace she gave everything for. Uh, Clouds and Earth is the first installment in the Peace Outside trilogy and is a dark and thrilling tale of intrigue and espionage set in the data-driven world of tomorrow. Startling and prescient in equal measure, it is a must-read for fans of sci-fi and contemporary fiction alike. So that is the description of Clouds and Earth. Again, it is the first in a trilogy, and um, I'm excited to see where this trilogy is going. I can't tell you too much about where this book goes because I don't want to give a lot away. And of course, Sadie's going to speak about it more in our interview. If you are interested in thrillers, if you are interested in suspense, if you are interested in um, heavily techno- techno- technological blah, 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 books that feature technology or are set in the near future, um, not surprisingly a dystopian near future, as is so often the case with this genre. But um, it's not a utopia either. There's still issues in the world. Of course there are. Um, But if you're interested in this book, I do have copies to give away. So stay tuned until the end of the podcast to find out how you can win a copy of Clouds and Earth by Sadie Scarlett. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get to that interview. Um, Sadie is located in, uh, she lives in Dubai. So I was able to add a new location to my uh, list of places that I've spoken to authors in and um, very exciting that see this book is about technology and it's very exciting that technology allows me to speak to someone in Dubai about her new book very cool here is that interview with author Sadie Scarlett about her new book Clouds and Earth hi Sadie welcome to the podcast thank you for having me it is wonderful to have you here. We are here to talk about your new book, um, Clouds and Earth. Before we talk about the book, though, uh, I would love for my listeners to get to know you a little bit. So if you could just share a little a little about yourself, that would be great. Wonderful. Uh, well, my name's Sadie Scarlett, and I was born and brought up in the Middle East. Uh, my mother's British. My father's Emirati. 
uh, and I um, went to school in Dubai. Uh, and then when I reached the age of 18, I went back to the UK for university. I read politics and international relations at uh, Royal Holloway, uh, University of London. Um, whilst at university, I became an engaged activist and I was, uh, sort of just engaged or enraged or inspired, uh, to get active politically, uh, by, um, the Iraq war. And I really wanted to join in the activism and I, I kind of couldn't because I was sort of late to the party and I was too young when the the action was going on and um, I sort of felt a little bit, uh, I don't know, lost in that. I felt, uh, <laughs> it's hard to describe, I sort of, yeah, a bit late to the party and trying to really wanted to make a difference in the world and I didn't know how to and I got involved in all sorts of um, student politics which uh, eventually was sort of also an inane activity and um, you know looking back on it now I had a lot of fun and it was very engaging but um, it wasn't a great use of my time <laughs> and um, I decided that I make and then after university and internships and intense sort of political activism, I decided to become a comedian. <laughs> uh, and I worked um, for almost almost uh, 10 years in London. Well, I say um, <laughs> I tried to get work as a comedian. I tried stand up. I did a lot of improv uh, and I had just tons of part time jobs. Uh, so I knock, was knocked around London for a bit uh, until when I got bored and I moved back to the Middle East. And I was um, lucky enough to get a great job as a financial crime investigator. Uh, and that's the job I do today. And I, I write novels in my spare time, uh, of which Clouds and Earth uh, is the first full-length novel um, I've also published a book of poetry called Love Crimes, which I'm very proud of. Uh, but uh, today is about clouds and earth. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm, I love that you went from stand-up comedy to um, financial crimes investigator. That, that's a very interesting turn of career. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I loved comedy and I, I still love comedy. And the reason I got into writing was because I learned all about story structure and joke structure. And, you know, I was trying to get more into comedy writing and I didn't quite make it. And it was really brutal. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's brutal for the guys, but it's even more brutal for the girls. Uh, and so, yeah, I had a tough time and, and hopefully uh, all pictures of um, me performing stand-up uh, and improv have been destroyed. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, that was that was an interesting time. I, you know, now I I don't even know how I got up there. I don't even know how I had the confidence to just get on stage. I swear that something was missing in my brain that luckily has returned. <laughs> yeah, you just got to get up there and put yourself out there. That's amazing. Um, so <laughs> I, I could ask you a million questions about that, but let's let's go ahead and talk about the book. Uh, can tell us a little bit about the the storyline for Clouds and Earth. The story, without giving away too much, uh, the storyline is um, a soldier has come back from war, and she is a was a very she was very very good at what she did um, what she did. Uh, she was very effective, and she uh, finds herself sort of been made redundant and obsolete at a very young age, and. Um, She's also incredibly lonely. Uh, she she realizes that you know so much of her time, energy, and attention has been just focused on one thing. Now that that one thing isn't there anymore, she just doesn't know what to do with herself, and she has to just live with the consequences of you know the fact that there are not a lot of um, sol other soldiers, her friends, her age. They're just not around anymore. And she uh, 
gets very, very bored and very, very lonely. And the devil makes work for idle hands. And she is put a position doing some espionage. And uh, this, unfortunately, uh, doesn't go uh, the way she'd like it to. She sort of has an inkling that the person she's working for is, is no good. But she, um, she can't help herself. She wants to be useful again. She wants to distract herself from some of the other unpleasant things that are going on in her life. So she just can't help herself. I'm going to jump in here now that we've gotten the introduction uh, to the book from Sadie. I also have to jump in and say I loved Sadie's discussion of uh, her life before she started writing this novel. I mean, don't you just want to sit down with her and, and hear all of her stories about stand-up comedy and acting and all of the things that led her to this point? She's got to have a million of them. Um, uh, unfortunately, this is you know a book review podcast, and I can't just take four hours to talk to my authors about other stuff. I would if I could because I am very nosy. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more, obviously, about this book, uh, specifically about uh, the inspiration for the storyline for Clouds and Earth. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I'm speaking this week with author Sadie Scarlett about Clouds and Earth, the first in her The Peace Outside trilogy. Let's go ahead and get right back to that interview. So what was your inspiration for the story then? The inspiration was, uh, unfortunately, it comes from a very dark place. Like, as I said, um, I was an anti-war activist and I got quite despondent and uh, you know, quite, you know, I, I went to just a very, very dark thoughts about the world and how could, you know, things like terror and war just keep happening. And luckily, terrorism is actually a really rare thing. Um, you are not uh, going to die of a terrorist attack, according to statistics. And so naturally, my mind was like, well, what, well, what if what if terrorist attacks were very common? What if that happened every day? And what would the world would the reaction um, be like to that? And that was the initial sort of spark. And this happened, you know, th this sort of entered my mind in like 2013. And um, I sort of didn't get actually put pen to paper until about 2014. Uh, and that's when I, and that was basically the inspiration that just sort of started it off, um, which unfortunately is a very, very dark thought, but, you know, I just, I just needed to explore that and get that out, get that out of my system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And out of that, I feel like, um, the main character, Sandy is, uh, you know, she, she's not exactly a hero. She's not exactly an anti-hero, um. What about her do you think may or may not resonate with readers? I, well, uh, a lot of people have told me that Sandy is very unlikable. And um, I really love her, even though I think I may be the only one who does. But mm. I think that people will appreciate that she was asked to do terrible things, uh, things that, you know, violated her own sense of morality and she was a good soldier and just got on with it. And she really, you know, put her life you know, to one side while she helped. She did everything she was told to do. Uh, she followed every order. And um, 
she now doesn't like being discarded or swept out with the old rushes. You know, she doesn't like being told that, yes, we l- thank you for your service, but get lost now. And I think that a lot of people will, you know, so, uh, well, I know some people have definitely felt that at work or um, I really feel like, you know, people who have been asked to do unreasonable things may empathize with her and uh, people who have pining for loved ones will uh, get where she's coming from and you know get why she's in pain and get why she's bored and um really understand that you know it's it's sort of it's hard if you've only had one meaning in your life to then find a whole new meaning Mm -hmm. and i i found her to be a fascinating character um not always likable but very very human and i think you did a really good job of exploring just how her life evolved so that she got to the point that she's at. Um, there's also a, a couple of characters who are cadets in the book. They're, they're at the beginning of their careers, Natalia and Massey. And especially Massey um, is in some ways very similar to Sandy and in some ways not so similar. Can you, can you talk about um, his and Natalia's importance to the storyline? They are very important to the storyline. and. Uh, readers will see why in the second book, but um, they share so much. Uh, Natalia is very intellectually like her, and Massey is sort of emotionally like her, and he is arrogant and um, he worships her, and he has very similarities. And he is in many ways what she would have been when she was his age. Um, but because of their similarities to her, when Sandy becomes a problem, uh, these two cadets are used um, to sort of uh, to explain, you know, her behavior without letting um, her know she's being watched. Uh, and I that's that's the, the importance of them in this book. Uh, when we go to book two, um, we will see uh, more of Massey. In many ways, I designed book two to 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 have Massey as the protagonist, uh, but since it's still under, um, you know, a work in progress, uh, I'm not not sure to what extent that will be, but it's looking that way right now. Okay, and and so you know, it, it there, it's interesting to see the world through their eyes because they are going through the academy at a very different time. You know, Sandy went through during wartime, and now they are going through during peacetime, and so to see kind of their motivations, I, I found to be um, a really interesting. Uh, comparison between Massey and Sandy. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, in, um, in many ways, so the oh. Enlightenment is kind of a theme in this book. Can you talk a bit about, um, well, just the the decision to make the Enlightenment um, kind of a focus for the story? So the theme of the Enlightenment uh, sort of manifests itself in this book. Um, through the main antagonist, Hamilton, who wants to control freedom of speech, who wants to really manipulate uh, human behavior, and he thinks he can make a more perfect world. And in doing so, he would have to curtail a lot of freedoms. He would have to um, manipulate people. And in many ways, this sort of clashes with Sandy um, without him knowing it. Uh, because Sandy has fought for all these freedoms um, and then he wants to curtail them. So he should really know that Sandy is not going to be his ally, Um, but he doesn't. Uh, And they have an interesting conversation about how much control you can uh, exert over human beings. Um, And... Uh, that is one of the ways uh, the Enlightenment really features in this book. And um, I view sort of terror conflict as sort of those who really want Enlightenment values and live under the auspices of Enlightenment values versus those who don't. Uh, So that's another way um, the issue manifests itself uh, in the book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, are there uh, autobiographical elements in either the story or the characters? 
Um, I would say yes. I would say, I don't know, because I'm not like Sandy at all. However, I sort of view her as someone who's in a really difficult position. And she's in a position that I have often felt. Um, I consider myself a Middle Eastern ally of the West. And um, we're often put in a very difficult position. Um, and sometimes, you know, I do consider myself a feminist, but I often find that feminists in the West aren't good allies to Middle Eastern women like myself. And, yeah, there's definitely a conflict there that I sort of felt, um, you know, was embodied by Sandy. And, uh, yeah, so I would say that, yes, there's definitely autobiographical elements. And I feel like there are also contradictions in that, you know, we teach children thou shalt not kill, um, but then we make exceptions. Like, well, in wartime, off you go. We're expecting you to just kill. Um, and we're expecting you to be perfect machines. Um, and that's why, you know, there's a real conflict of morality there, um, which is sort of some, something that I, you know, as an anti-war activist, um, you know, I struggled with the sort of hypocrisy. And, you know, you'll have politicians saying, oh, we have to stop violence um, on our own streets. But you know, send our soldiers abroad and, you know, in order to do violence. And, um, yeah, that's something that's definitely made me uncomfortable. And it's something that makes Sandy uncomfortable as well. Um, even though she, you know, she's struggling with that internal conflict um, throughout the book. Yeah. And I am going to jump in here now so we can take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about um, Sadie mentioned that she is a Middle Eastern feminist. We're going to be talking more about that and how she sees the future of sci-fi and thriller genres and where she would like to see those go in terms of diversity. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with author Sadie Scarlett about her new book, Clouds and Earth. As a, a Middle Eastern feminist, as you said, what are your hopes in terms of uh, diversity in this genre of suspense and thriller? Uh, I, have, I have many, many hopes. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if they're going to be realized. But, um, I think it's really interesting what... Uh, the Arab states are doing in order to pull themselves um, into the future, uh, especially in places like um, Dubai, obviously one of them, but also uh, Kuwait and places like that. Um, they, you know, you, you hear about um, space programs and uh, very interesting scientific uh, sponsorships and research coming out of uh, this region. And I just feel like you know, the, the the book industry tells, you know, a, a very narrow range of stories. And I just wish that they would publish just a wider range of stories. And I know that there are economic reasons they can't do that. 
But um, yeah, there are, you know, the Middle East has so much opportunity and I see it as a hopeful, positive place, believe it or not. Um, and I, yeah, I just wish that there were, there was just more. Um, uh, and I just, you know, it's just, the stories are there. They just, they just can't, you know, sort of get an audience and get out yet. Uh, but so I'm very hopeful. Uh, but uh, I think we'll have a little bit of a long way to go just yet. Yeah. And uh, so often um, Middle Eastern characters are really pigeonholed into very specific, very stereotypical roles, whether that's in television or movies or books. I have to tell you, when I was an actor, you know, some of the things I was asked to do were painful. It was like, um, you know, and, you know, I had a, an extra, I was an extra and I did tons of extra stuff and I was always in a burqa. And then my agency said to me, what, you know, why don't you have your own burqa? And I was like, well, <laughs> I actually was born and raised in the Middle East and I never had to wear one. You know, it's not, it's not standard. Um, right. So that was an interesting conversation. Um, yeah. And that, yeah, sometimes Middle Eastern characters in fiction are um, yeah, almost painful. Uh, so, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's slowly getting better, and it, it's wonderful to see characters that can be more reflective of of the diversity that that represents Middle Eastern people because they aren't all one thing, of course not. So um, yeah, and sometimes I feel like uh, people in the West don't realize that you know they they have allies and people who think like them um, in the Middle East. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, I don't think Western feminists realize how many allies they have in the Middle East at all. And, you know, I wish that they there were better re relations there. And I just I just I, I seriously think they just don't think that those people exist. And actually, mm -hmm. they do. So there sure. you go. Yeah. Um, thank you for that conversation. Um, in terms of research, what kinds of research did you do for the book? Um, I did a ton of research on uh, future technology and technology that already exists, but in its infancy. And for instance, things like vertical farms, a skyscraper with a farm, which grows, um, which has a perfectly uh, integrated um, environment and uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, instead of growing food in a field, you grow it in a skyscraper instead. And it's really great for the environment because um, you're using a lot less land and you can perfectly regulate everything. Uh, and people don't know that that technology exists already. Uh, and even though, for instance, in places like Singapore, uh, they use it. And, mm. you know, sooner or later, that technology will be... Um, it, it will be just, you know, that will just be part of our lives seamlessly and unquestioned, you know, without, you know, and I tried to present the future technology without any novelty. It was just like, here it is. This is mm -hmm. what they have. Um, because, you know, so, so quickly we take technology for granted. Um, I just um, really, you know, tried to make that part of the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And technology, uh, and the role that it plays in our world is really a, a large part of the book. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you decided to, because this is in the near future, but um, how did you kind of decide on the role that technology would, would play in the book? Well, I started from the assumption that human life would be much, much better. Uh, because I have a historian friend called Stephen Davies, who is really great. And he's a historian and everyone always asks him, you know, if you could be alive in any period of time, which period of time would you be alive in? And they're expecting him to say, oh, the Tudor period or something like that. And he actually says, no, I would be alive in the future because mm. life has got better. Life has just got better. And everybody thinks life is getting worse, but it's not. It's getting better all the time. And and I thought that that was a really interesting comment from a historian, uh, from a man who studies history all day. Uh, and so I just, you know, I was working on the assumption that we wouldn't be living in a dystopian nightmare. We would be living in a place where our lives are much, much better. We have even better medical technology. Um, 
and uh, just, you know, we'd, we'd have integrated cars, uh, which we never have to drive. And uh, we would have an, you know, an abundance, you know, almost so much of an abundance, uh, you can get very bored uh, because all your needs are met really easily. Um, that was something I also thought about. Um, and yeah, I, I really think that um, in the next book, uh, you'll see more about the military technology. Uh, and, you know, one of the reasons um, the military use these suits, which make them almost invisible, is because, um, uh, you know, facial recognition technology has made um, some, some elements of spying obsolete. Uh, so that's one thing I'm going to explore in the next book as well. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the next book, this this Clouds and Earth is the first in a trilogy. So can you, I mean, I don't want you to give anything away, but can you tell us uh, anything about the, the second book? Uh, yes, uh, the second book um, is going to be called The Webs and Spiders. Uh, and it picks up just a couple of months after the end of the first book. Uh, and we're going to see um, some interesting developments, things that have started to become a problem in the first book are now going to become a major problem in the second book. And our characters are, uh, yeah, they're going to, first of all, they're going to have to deal with the consequences of their behavior in the first book. And then they're going to have to try and solve out the problems, some of which they have made themselves. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, without giving too much away, uh, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, well, in the first book, definitely did not wrap anything up in a nice, neat bow. So there's definitely things that need to be resolved. So, uh, yeah, in yeah. fact, um, I, you know, I've got a bit of flack for not, for not like, you know, wrapping things up in a nice, neat bow. But on the yeah. other hand, I was like, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, I could have just written the book as a two hundred and fifty thousand word book, but I, I decided to split it up. So right. uh, hopefully. Uh, Hopefully, people will be able to consider all three books, you know, once they're done. Yeah. In a row. Yeah. Do you have an estimate on when the second book might be out? Um, I'm aiming for uh, early next year. Okay. Okay. Um, so when did you then start writing? You know, you've done various things in your life. Um, you write uh, on the side. You have a full-time job. So when did you start writing to maybe to be published with the thought of being published? Um, the, the first time I decided to publish stuff was uh, my poetry book. And I just had all these poems that I'd just been writing since I was like 14 years old. And I just thought, well, why not publish them? Um, what, you know, uh, I, why would I throw them all away? You know, they're good. Why, you know, and I just sort of had this epiphany in sort of 2014, 2015 saying, well, look, you know, you, uh, you know, you've quit all the acting, um, but, you know, this would be a great creative outlet and you're already writing already. Uh, so just publish and be damned. And honestly, I, you know, I thought about, you know, how are you going to feel when, if you, you know, if you inevitably get bad reviews because everyone does. And I was like, actually, you know, this is my main hobby now. And, um, I, I really love my story and I, you know, I've already started the second book and there's so many things that I think about in my head when I'm at work and I just have to, you know, write them down and then email myself with all the notes that I've been writing at work when I should have been doing work, but mm -hmm. uh, hopefully my to this uh, podcast um so yeah uh so it was about 2014 when i sort of you know stopped working my all my terrible part-time jobs sort of realized that i wasn't going to be an activist uh, like i thought i was going to be um and i was just looking for something else to find satisfaction and writing sort of was there in front of me the whole time mm-hmm so out of your uh, particular um, journey towards writing, do you have advice for aspiring authors? My main piece of advice right now would be put yourself in the reader's shoes a little bit more um, because I, you know, I wrote in a style and a structure that I feel very comfortable with, which is in the book, there are multiple POVs. There, there are only actually three main POVs. Um, 
and occasionally we dabble in other POVs. And I, that, that seemed perfectly natural to me. That's a type of storytelling that exists um, in uh, visual storytelling a lot more than uh, literary s- storytelling. But I sort of didn't realize that how that would come across to the writer and uh, to the reader. And some readers have found that um, a little bit jarring. But um, I've, I, I did not consider that. Um, so my advice would mainly be, you know, if you're a person, it, well, it's very, very hard for a writer to do this. But you still have to try and do it, which is if you're a person, you know, who is unfamiliar with the story and the characters picking up the book for the first time, what 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 will they experience? Uh, And also just um, uh, think about um, the plot and really structure it well. Uh, The Clouds and Earth has a very um, typical uh, three act structure. Um, but I feel like it's not very accessible or it's it, people have described it to me as complex. And I didn't realize um, uh, I didn't realize that I had been writing something quite complex. Um, so, yeah, that's why I've had very strange reviews ranging from what the hell is the plot of this book to this book has a very, very good, this book has a very complex, well-developed plot. And so um, the you know, just just keep your complexity in check. Because um, you know, I've you know, some people can handle the complexity and um, other people can't. So um, just just be aware of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, you have. I know you. Uh, sorry, let me start that over. <laughs> when you take the time to then read for yourself, do you have favorite authors or genres? Do you know, I actually don't. Um, there are genres that I don't really touch. Uh, one of them is <laughs> anything written for women. <laughs> okay, it's quite. It's quite. I do not have a girly taste. You know, unsurprisingly, uh, for someone who writes niche sci-fi, uh, I do not have girly taste in books, and I really can't stand anything which is like romance, which is typical romance. Um, uh, that those are not the book for me, and I've stopped reviewing them. Um, and I even went back to on Goodreads and deleted all my reviews for romance books because I was like, look, that those books were not written for me. So um, I read a lot of sci-fi uh, and I also read um, fiction. I read tons of nonfiction, oddly. Um, and uh, I, the, the, one of the most recent books that I absolutely loved was um, a book called Scythe by Neil Shusterman. And I just thought that was a very interesting concept because he had turned, you know, effectively you, all the characters are living in a utopian world. And then he just adds this drop of poison. And I thought that that was so clever. Um, that sort of atypical uh, science fiction or alternative history uh, is really great. And obviously mm-hmm. I love spy novels. I absolutely love uh, Jean Le Carré and, um, you know, I, I, I thought that uh, my book was going to be a classy spy novel like John le Carré, and it instead went off on this sci-fi tangent. And, um, <laughs> well, that's, um, that's uh, what happened. Uh, but, yes, uh, so spy novels, um, science fiction, uh, fantasy, uh, and very little uh, chiclet. Uh, that's <laughs> what makes up what makes up my um my reading okay thank you for that um i know you have a website so if you can tell uh tell us the address of your website and also where people can find you on social media uh yes my website is www.sadie-scarlet.com that's sadie s-a-y-d-e dash scarlet s-c-a-r-l-e-t-t uh, you can also find me um, on Twitter as Sadie underscore Scarlet. Uh, Instagram, although I I don't really use Instagram a lot, I think my profile is currently private, but that is Sadie underscore Scarlet. Um, my Facebook page is probably more interesting. Um, I also post a lot of um, the articles that I write on my Facebook page, and that's just... Uh, Facebook dash Sadie Scarlet with no spaces or dashes or anything. 
And um, if uh, you go on to my Facebook page, uh, you'll find the cover of my next book very shortly, um, as that was just recently finalized. Uh, and that's uh, my social media presence um, in a nutshell. Okay. Thank you for that. So we've talked about um, quite a few topics dur during this conversation, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to touch on in terms of writing or Clouds and Earth or the, the trilogy in general? Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. I, I don't know. Um, just uh, please pick it up and I hope you enjoy it. Um, okay. Just I think that you'll like uh, this book if you have an interest in current affairs and moral dilemmas and um if you're the type of person who likes that you're you may like this book more than people who enjoy traditional sci-fi i feel like because i turn a lot of the tropes um uh, a lot of the traditional sci-fi tropes on their heads uh, that's why i you know people who usually pick up sci-fi i think are a bit like what is this book um mm -hmm. but uh People who uh, pick up more current affairs books or read a lot of history books um, or like generally militaryish things um, or ethics, uh, they'll find this book, you know, maybe more interesting than the usual sci-fi. Okay. Thank you so much. And um, thank you also for taking time. I, I know it's evening for you. So thank you for taking time out of your evening to talk to me about this book. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Once again, thank you to Sadie for not only taking the time out of her evening, because it was, uh, I think, about 9 p.m. when we started talking, uh, for her uh, taking the time out of her evening, but also dealing with uh, a few technical issues that we had during the podcast. <laughs> completely, I just, she completely lost me at one point. Um, she could hear me, I could not hear her, so <laughs> she was very patient with those, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you, my listeners, as well, as always. Um, and as part of that appreciation, I I do love to give you books. I love to give away books and introduce you to especially new authors when they have a debut novel. So if you are interested in this book, Clouds and Earth by Sadie Scarlett, as the beginning of the Peace Outside trilogy, then you should definitely enter the giveaway to win a copy. All you have to do is go to the GSMC Book Review social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Those links are included in the show notes, the show description for this episode, or you can go to our website and find them there either way. And uh, the, the, so it's easy. You just have to go to those Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, GSMC Book Review, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and comment on this post. Episode 149, Interview with Sadie Scarlett. That's it. Comment. Uh, please do like the post, share the post, retweet the post, whatever it is. Follow our pages. I would love for you to do that. But if you want to win a copy of Clouds and Earth, you need to comment on episode 149, Interview with Sadie Scarlett, and you will automatically be entered to win a copy of this book. Thank you so much again to Sadie. Thank you so much to you, my listeners. I hope you are having a wonderful week so far. April already. We are just moving right along through this year. So hope you're having a wonderful week, a wonderful April. And I hope you will join me again for the next episode of the GSMC Book Review Podcast. But mostly, I hope you take some time to go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can and also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.